other YouTube videos associated with mama, what have you, mama, what have you, are undoubtedly questionable, undoubtedly questionable, questionable, questionable. If they're watching doctors on YouTube now, imagine when my kid's in high school, they're probably going to be watching people have sex parties on the metaverse. I'm not sure where that line is. If, if, if it was a material that was, say, a Playboy magazine, that would be inappropriate, would it not? So I wouldn't expect it to come before the board. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board-certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today we're talking about how Alaska hates my racy sex education and has effectively voted it out of their curriculum that I didn't even know it was being included in. I'm going to go see what the school board had to say in their board meeting about my content and read the comments on the school board's live stream and respond to some of them. And AS 14.30.361 require that materials or guest speakers addressing sexual education be approved by the school board prior to use. You could require that the content is factually accurate too. I do have some visuals for us to kind of follow along with, and I hope that that helps this conversation um, a little bit. I love the lady in the background just like knitting away. I literally don't care about anything that any of these people are talking about. I'm going to passively listen and knit this pan holder so that I don't burn my fingers when I'm getting my brownies out of the oven later. Mama Dr. Jones, those are videos on a YouTube channel. She's an OBGYN. I am. Uh, they're very uh, kind of easy to understand. They are. She puts difficult subjects into context, I think. Oh, thank you. This person had nice things to say. I appreciate that. Four community members made comments on the Google form. Four. Four. That person did not like the Mama Dr. Jones video. <laughs> don't like me. I don't know what I'm going to do. How will I go on? <laughs> Sorry, just give me a second. I'm going to go delete my channel. Is there a way for families to opt out of the sexual education course? Absolutely, yes. That's a problem. More of an opt out, not an opt in. I believe that's Sorry. the case. Why would you opt your kid out of sex ed? It, well, okay, let me, if it was abstinence only, you should opt your kid out and give them actual sex ed. If you want your kid to understand things and be informed and have a lower chance of getting pregnant as a teenager, go ahead and opt out of abstinence only sex ed. I didn't catch that uh, the YouTube video by fem, fem, Femsplained. I didn't know what that meant. I looked it up. Femsplained is when a female or male feminist tells people how they're supposed to think about sex and gender. Does that make sense? What I, I don't understand. Is that does that make sense, Femsplained? Is that, is that, that is, accurate? Do you that, know? That's the name of the YouTube channel. And do we know what that means, Femsplained? Is that a term that means something? Or? I had not ever heard it described until you just read it. I could have guessed kind of what it was, but I have not really heard that. Oh my God. This is like watching Congress talk to Mark Zuckerberg. Nameless Network is the name of the YouTube channel, and Femsplained is one of their like subcategories of videos that they publish. One of the questions that I have on the... Um, Mama Dr. Jones one, for instance, I actually didn't have much problem with the information. It's pretty accurate. I uh, actually had a discussion with my wife afterwards. And it's pretty accurate. Thank you, President Tim Doran, for stating that my content, of which I am the expert in, is pretty accurate. Not totally. It's pretty accurate for a board-certified OBGYN physician. <laughs> I've been recording this so long that my memory card was full. So you're welcome that I cut out 90% of this incredibly, horribly boring school board meeting. The main problem that I have with all of the video links that were sent, they create a trust with the name and the source. We have now are now putting into our children that Mama Dr. Jones videos on YouTube channel are an excellent, reputable source for education. Oh no, not our kids trusting board certified gynecologists to teach them about their health and sex ed. Can't have that. Your kids are probably on YouTube regardless, and they're probably watching some health content in some context on YouTube. Why not make sure that you're sharing videos from people who are reliable? Rather than just removing this information from your children, associate yourself with people who are reliable. Even if that's not me, that's fine. If you don't think I'm reliable or my content's you know, too fun and you want straightforward, boring stuff for your kids, that's fine. The concern is valid. The management of the concern is 
counterproductive. I will once again remind you that Alaska has absolutely no standard regarding medically accurate sex education. What is currently in their curriculum is who knows what. No, it's just something that I think is ill-conceived of the district to allow anyone to have a voice to our children or for us to put forward as a trusted source anyone who also has things that we don't want our kids involved in and that we don't trust for our children. I don't think any of my content is unreliable, given that I'm definitely more qualified to speak on all these things than you. We are telling our children these are safe, um, educational places to go for information. And some of the information that you find in the peripheral of this information is highly inappropriate. April Smith, I'm sorry, can you please like direct message me exactly what you're concerned about? I'm not sure I understand what you have seen on my channel that you find inappropriate and I would love to talk about it. Get in touch, girl. Let's chat. Not creating a safe environment for our kids. Oh, April, you want to have a conversation about the safety of your children and you want to focus on my expert science-based educational YouTube channel and you don't want to talk about the fact that state sex education policies for Alaska don't currently require any instruction on consent. I just have a really hard time believing that you know anything about how to keep kids safe in this discussion. And I'm disappointed in the teachers whoever it was that put this forward. April Smith, wow, okay. She's disappointed in the teachers who are seeking to provide reliable, evidence-based, scientific, non-judgmental education to their children from a board-certified physician who is an expert in that field. Wow. Now I'm just wondering if she like actually watched my videos and had a concern or if she just made all of that up in her head. I can tell you I'm troubled with the process. We have two teachers that can put forth recommended reading material and it gets pushed automatically before the board. Oh no, the teachers who actually spend face-to-face -face time with our children on a daily basis and understand their needs and educational goals are presenting information that they want to be able to use in their classrooms as supplemental curriculum. This is a travesty. I'm not sure where that line is. If, if, if it was a material that was, say, a Playboy magazine, that would be inappropriate, would it not? So I wouldn't expect it to come before the board. My man, I'm a doctor. What? How are you going to compare this to presenting Playboy as an educational material in the same breath as you're talking about my videos? The YouTube video uh, being requested is possibly benign in nature. Other YouTube videos associated with mama, what have you mama, what have you, are undoubtedly questionable. Undoubtedly questionable. 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 Please tell me which ones. Now, why in the world would we associate with a YouTube channel that, that is questionable? This doctor's just like if we were using Playboy to educate our students. Where's the line? There's no line anymore. I, I think our teachers can, can teach effectively uh, without YouTube. Yes, Matthew, yes. While we're at it, why don't we get rid of all the other expert resources that teachers might want to use? They teach effectively. What could go wrong? Come on, Matthew Sampson. You're welcome on the channel anytime. Let's have a talk. Let's debate. You can tell me exactly what you have a problem with. I will say that the one on the morning after pill, I did not see at all appropriate. The efforts of teachers is to help students be informed about things and to make good decisions. This one is, I'm going to say, more of a sales pitch. <laughs> it's an after the fact. It's a reactive type of thing. I also do think it's quite important for good decisions to include the ability to prevent a pregnancy if your condom breaks, which is what Plan B can do. Emergency contraception is a very important part of comprehensive sex education, especially for teenagers. I don't see any problem with teenagers knowing what to do if they are raped, if a condom breaks, if they need emergency contraception. The difference between a sixth grader and a 12th grader and saying that it's blanketed, that it's okay um, for all sixth graders and 12th graders, that's what a yes vote would mean. Not necessarily that every educator would be using or utilizing these materials, but that we are approving it for all sixth to 12th grade for the first two items and ninth to 12th grade for the other four items. I understand that concern and that is a problem and it's why the educational system should have comprehensive sex ed that starts in elementary school with naming body parts and just normalcy and moves you know, consecutively through every year. I personally would not allow my children to look at these videos. I guess that's that's really just what I want to say is is that we need to really have a consideration of of um, 
this topic. Jennifer, I have eight-year-old twin girls and they've watched most of my videos. So I'd really love to have a chat with you too. You're welcome on the channel anytime to talk about safe and healthy attitudes towards sex education, consent, how your body is normal and the things that it does are normal and how that affects self-esteem, empowers people to actually delay sex. I have delivered babies to kids who are 13. That is why this is important even for younger children. And having open communication about these topics with your kids is really, really important. Again, my content is not created for 10 or 11 year olds. That being said, I don't think it is dangerous for them. I would simply personally ask when you take this back, maybe tell the, the people that asked to move this forward to maybe spend a little more time next time in bedding instead of, in my opinion, wasting the board's time. I find it unusual to say that you're going to blame your teachers who are putting in the freaking really hard work right now in the middle of a pandemic for asking you to review videos and documents that they found helpful for their students. And now you're gonna berate them for that and tell them they're wasting your time. The only waste of a time is me having to watch this and listen to you all represent my expert analysis of information as if it is Playboy magazine. I would rather not sift through these and pick through and find what's good and identify what's bad. And, and let's just get some quality stuff uh, that's not controversial in the future. I'm sorry for that incredibly low quality and controversial video about five things a vagina does that are normal that was meant to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with their body and isn't worried something's going wrong. Our goals here are to be trustworthy um, and to be a partner to parents. Mine too. Shocking how all of you can take everything out of context and make it seem as though I'm not. Humiliating to me personally, and I think it's humiliating to us as an organization that we even put it out there on our website. Often um, in this room, we talk about our most vulnerable students, special ed, and in, uh, in other ways. We should require our teachers to use the core materials for sex ed in our district and nothing else. April, what your teachers are telling you is that that's not sufficient. If you're not updating your books, if your kids won't read it or understand it or learn it because it's boring, or if it's presented in a shocking manner that disgusts them and scares them out of learning about their own body, it's not effective. When your teachers are bringing supplemental material to you, it doesn't mean that they should just stick to the curriculum. It means there's a deficiency in the curriculum and it needs to be fixed. There is so much trash and so much dangerous material on YouTube. We need to protect our most vulnerable students, students who are experiencing abuse, students who are experiencing um, humiliation at home by being exposed to these kind of things. What is she talking about? those parents are not going to be opting their kids out of something that is going to not be appropriate for them. They are vulnerable because of their marginalized situation at home. How is any of this related to kids experiencing abuse at home or humiliation? Like how are any of these educational materials? I, what? The only thing I agree with these people on is that their process is absolutely asinine. We cannot trust an opt-out system. If we are really, truly, and honestly trying to look out for our most vulnerable students, we cannot trust an opt-out system because the most vulnerable students may not have a parent or guardian who is able to discern this information appropriately. You shouldn't be able to opt out of sex ed. That's actually what your argument should be. The people who opt their children out of sex ed are the people who refuse to let their children be taught accurate education on their body and sex. And that is scientifically shown in multiple data-driven sets to be completely detrimental to both the emotional and physical and future sexual well-being of kids who were never given that information. It is dangerous. It increases the chances that they could be assaulted and not talk about it because they don't know what happened. It is a pipeline to 
not understanding consent, which is really important in sex ed, this is crazy. It should not be an opt-in system to be taught sex ed. And some of this information seemed to almost encourage dating violence and abuse, encourage dating violence. We are crazy. It's a humiliation, lack of trust, and and goes to our declining enrollment. I know you are talking about my videos encouraging that. I need specifics here because I've looked through most of these materials and I did not pick that up. It is not the school's job to educate on sex ed. I, I mean, these resources, some of them are kind of like an encouragement of having pre uh, pre or underage sex right and that is they're not there's no data that backs up what you just said regarding sex ed which we know scientifically is not associated with lowering the age at which somebody has sex if you think that any of these videos encourage people to have sex rather than just teaching them about it that is inaccurate inappropriate on so many levels and so i just think that it's um i don't think we should even be talking about this it shouldn't have been even brought before the board I don't think any of these people understand what they're saying. I am still uncertain uncertain about the supplemental materials. Um, like a few have said, I don't think we're ready to make this decision quite yet. I would love to see a medical uh, provider review these materials and give their expert opinion. Hi, <laughs> funny you should say that. They're fine. And I feel like I missed something. Ms. Smith, you mentioned that the supplemental materials encourage dating violence and abuse. Um, if that's the case, I want to be fully aware of that. Can you tell me how you came to that decision? Erin, you are a genius. Thank you for asking that. I think that the public knows me. And I feel that things like the morning after pill, um, that this video uh, said, teaches the kids that the morning after pill stops pregnancy, which it doesn't. It is also an abortifacient. It causes early term abortions. And it, that is inappropriately presented in here. I understand you got a lot of feelings going on, but the statement you just made is not factual. I am definitely more qualified to speak on this. It is also not representative dating violence. What? You are sitting on a school board arguing against physicians giving evidence-based health education to children and in the same breath stating a completely false statement about an emergency contraception. This is why y'all shouldn't be voting on this information because you don't actually know what is true. Things that are presented in here, it encourages students toward sexual behaviors and toward sexual interaction. In the same way that going to driver's ed does not encourage me to drive 150 miles per hour down the highway in my car because I'm suddenly aware that I can, learning about safe sex does not make me have sex. It makes me have safe sex when I do have sex. That's how it works. The data is not on your side and you need to be working from a place of facts and get rid of these feelings because they are detrimental to our children. You keep accusing me and my material of being harmful, but this is harmful. And when we tell a um, middle schooler, sixth, sixth grade, these are some options of things you could be doing with your time. I feel that that is encouraging them toward inappropriate relationships, which all sexual relationships at the middle school age are inappropriate. And if we cannot agree on that, we cannot proceed with the rational conversation. The truth is that sex education has never been associated with lowering the age of sexual activity. Kids do not go to a sex ed class and go, huh, I never thought about this, but now I'm gonna have sex. That's not how it works. Additionally, the statement that you made was that something in these materials encourages dating violence. The response you gave had nothing to do with that. You keep making points that are both inaccurate and not touching on the topic that you initially said was there. Her statements really get into the nitty gritty of what's going on here, which is that that there are people in this room who would rather the education be abstinence only. And that is making them make wild statements about the accuracy or the appropriateness of the videos. I do agree with the fact that certain things probably should be approved by age group instead of across the board. However, I don't make the process, that's on them. But they've all made some ridiculous statements here that are just completely inaccurate. And if you can sit on a school board and make a completely false statement about how Plan B works, 
then you probably shouldn't be the person who is also in the same breath saying this information isn't reliable. Thank you. Uh, you, you took a hot topic, <laughs> a lot of information. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, I didn't expect it to be like that. I had honestly not watched it before this. I probably wouldn't have watched it at all on camera if I would have known that that's how it's going to go. I thought this is going to be like a quick process of them just saying, no, we don't like it, disapproved, which I would have actually been more okay with. Now I'm just like lit on fire and wanting to pull my hair out about the fact that several of these people made factually inaccurate statements while criticizing the board certified OBGYN who was in the material. April, you should watch some of my videos, babe, because I don't think that you're in a position to be judging what's accurate and what's not. Now all I can do is just rant about the fact that sex ed is such a dumpster fire in this country. I am kind of appalled actually that people can sit on a school board like this with vast amounts of misinformation and criticize actual experts giving information with no real like basis. They didn't have any points. It was just like all the vague claims that were not true. Yeah, I definitely understand now a little more why we are where we are as far as sex ed goes. Alaska's right smack dab in the middle where for teen pregnancies. There are thousands of teen pregnancies in Alaska every year, and sex ed is important. And that lowers the risk of teen pregnancy. It lowers the risk of STI. It lowers the risk of chronic health issues related to repetitively having STIs. And it improves modes of conversation between teenagers if they are in a situation where they need to be able to consent or not consent to sex. Having had that education gives them the words, gives them the understanding, lets them know they can say no, they can say yes, they have to decide that, but otherwise you're taking their power away. If we don't teach our kids about sex, if we don't give them reliable information, and if we don't do it in a way that they want to learn it, we take away their power to say no when they would want to. They have to have a basic understanding of how something works and what something is and what constitutes sex and what constitutes abuse in order to protect themselves. They have to have a detailed understanding of the available methods of preventing pregnancy if you want them to not get pregnant. Emergency contraception is meant to be for emergencies and people who have sex should know about it. We're gonna go through a few of the comments on this video just cause I like to torture myself. Um, and then I'm wrapping this up. I've been filming like two hours and I want to pull my hair out. This is why I will never sit on a school board. So Jess Robinson says, my nieces have had respiratory infections since this mask mandate and the mask they wear all day at school is not healthy for them and they don't stop COVID at all. Great information. Jess, that is unrelated to what I wanted to go over, but I just thought it was a really great thing to get out the gate with because that's what we're working with. <laughs> Megan says, why are nine to 12 year olds being taught about birth control and abortion? So first off, I'm not really sure where this person got the idea they're being taught about abortion. I don't think we talked about that in any of the materials today. However, the reason you teach kids about these things from a young age is the same reason you put your bike helmet on before you're crashing. It is much better for your kids to know about sex and consent and protection and pregnancy prevention before they've ever even thought about having sex than it is to go, oh, you've been sexually active for two years. Why don't we talk about how to protect yourself? Bike helmet before you're actively crashing. Michelle Lowry, I don't think little kids need to know about this. The parents should teach them. No one in elementary should learn this. I don't think that anything that was on the screen today is appropriate for elementary students. And it also was not being presented for elementary students. So good job arguing something that's not happening. Joyce Decarufel. Sorry, I, I'm sure that was not right. It's not your job to teach our kids sex education. That belongs in the home. You are glorifying sexual behaviors when in fact, some of it has no place in the curriculum. Unless you also think that learning about laws glorifies breaking the law, this is a false equivalency. This is not glorifying sexual behavior. It is discussing a health topic that is relevant to 99% of people over the course of their life, okay? This is not true. Second, it is a school's job to teach sex education because parents historically are very bad at this. Most of you didn't get any good sex education Therefore, you would be a very bad sex educator. We cannot leave sex education only up to the parents for a whole lot of reasons. One of them being not everybody has parents and not everybody has parents who are willing to teach them these things. Second, most of you parents out there 
don't know enough about sex education to know what you should include. You can't be responsible for teaching something that you never learned yourself. Sex ed isn't just, oh, sex happens, people have sex and that's how babies are made. That's not sex ed. Sex ed involves a curriculum that goes over consent, that goes over medically based information, medications for pregnancy prevention, that talks about the ins and outs of what is abuse and what is not, and goes over safety and goes over just a whole breadth of information. This isn't something you just like teach your kids overnight. It's detrimental to the health of our children to pretend that having parents teach that at home is an equitable way for people to learn about the health of their body and a topic that will affect almost every single one of them at some point in their life. Melanie comes in with the facts. Recent studies indicate that 40% of high school students have sex, 30% of teens report their parents have never talked to them about sex, and 57% of high school seniors have had sex. The topics our students rep feels inappropriate seem very important for students who might not have the same parents. Melanie, I think you're great. Thank you for being the only voice of reason I could find in these comments. Jessica Marie, my children are small and in elementary school. If this gets approved now, imagine what we'll be watching in five to eight years. Oh my God, moral panic. If they're watching doctors on YouTube now, imagine when my kid's in high school, they're probably gonna be watching people have sex parties on the metaverse. Sex education is a slippery slope straight to hell. This world is just going to hell in a handbasket. We keep teaching our kids about health and how to stay safe and how to prevent pregnancy and how to make sure that they are not being abused and consent. <sighs> my pearls, where's my pearls? Give me my pearls. Tamara says, we weren't asking your feelings, but what you stated as facts. The entire trouble with this viewpoint is opinion taken as fact. Are you aware that when kids are taught health and sex education, the unwanted pregnancies and abortions go down? Thank you, Tamara and Melanie, for being the two voices of reasoning in this comment section. They should elect the two of you to the school board. Jessica Marie, next they will be offering kids 12 and up morning after pills without parental consent if we let this pass. Jessica, I'm concerned about your comment. It seems to imply that you would rather a 12 year old who is having sex be pregnant than take the morning after pill. And I don't understand this line of reasoning. Of course, it would be better if they didn't have sex, which they're less likely to do if they're being taught comprehensive sex ed. However, if they do have sex, I think it's probably better if they take the morning after pill instead of having a baby. I mean, if it were my 12 year old, that's what I would prefer. And then we'd have a long discussion about have you been abused? Are you in a situation that you can't get out of? Is there something that you would like to talk to me about? Because my kids would come and talk to me about this because they know that that is a safe place. So maybe instead of mandating that your kids have parental consent to take control of their health, you make sure that there is a space for open conversation without judgment. Who asked me? Jason Robinson, 100% right. School does not need to teach about the kind of sequel education at school. The birds and bees are for home. Okay, I think that Jason means sexual education. And I, again, disagree. This is an inequitable way to teach about health. And it is absolutely asinine to think that people who don't understand sex education themselves and never had comprehensive sex education themselves are in any position qualified to be teaching sex education to their children. Additionally, not everybody has parents who will teach them that. In fact, I am pretty damn sure a lot of you making this comment have not talked to your kids about sex in an open and non-judgmental fashion. In conclusion, the Alaska School Board hates sex education, particularly when it is coming from a qualified source. If there are any teachers out there who feel like my content is appropriate to show to their students, don't tell anyone. Thank you for being here today. If you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you. I will see you next Monday. Side note, if you don't follow me on Twitter, go follow me there. I have lots of very interesting takes. Some are funny, some are educational, all are worth reading. I am not biased in telling you this. They won't verify me and I don't know why. My stupid and pointless mission for the next few months is to try to get Twitter verified and the more of you that follow me there, the more likely that is that will happen. Go tag me in every post that you see there and also follow me at Mama Dr. Jones on Twitter and learn about things.